In this video, we'll demonstrate the field workflow for taking panoramic photographs with a digital SLR. Okay, so the first step is to find your composition. And yeah, you probably should find that handheld, but unlike a single frame capture, a panorama isn't typically as sensitive to a small adjustment in composition. For example, a foot here or a foot there, a little higher, a little lower, typically won't really alter the overall feel of a panorama. Most of your compositional elements are far enough away that that small movement isn't that imperative. So after you find your composition, bring your tripod to bear under the, ta under the camera. Alright, so let's pretend that this is the best photograph I've ever seen in my life and this is the panorama that I want to take. Place the camera on the tripod in about the spot you thought was right. Next step, level the tripod itself. Use a bubble level built in right on top of the tripod to level the stem. This needs to be perfectly up and down, perfectly vertical. So if you don't have a bubble level on your tripod that will level the post, you can use a hot shoe bubble level, simply hold it on the post, and then adjust the legs while looking at the level here. After the tripod has been leveled, we now need to level the camera so that it's not tipped either way. It's perfectly level horizontally. We can use the in-camera electronic level, or if you don't have an in-camera electronic level, go ahead and put the hot shoe bubble level up in the hot shoe and level the camera for tilt. Okay, you can tip the camera a little bit forward, a little bit back to accommodate your composition. So it's level this way, but it can tip forward or back just a little bit to help accommodate the composition. The next step in our workflow is to attach any desired filter. Polarizing filter, neutral density filter. Polarizing filters can really cause problems with panoramas. So until you've got a lot of practice, you're probably best not using a polarizing filter. Okay, so the next step is to look in the eyepiece, pan the scene, and look for your closest foreground and background, and then look at your hyperfocal chart or your app on your smartphone and calculate the required aperture and the distance to focus at to achieve the required depth of field. So now I have the aperture set, I'll now focus at the proper distance. Aperture set, the proper distance is focused at to achieve the depth of field required for the scene. Now that our focus has been set for the entire scene and our exposure has been set for the entire scene, we do not refocus or change the exposure between shots. It stays the same for the entire panorama. So we'll pan far to the left of our frame, take one extra shot further. So if, if I wanted to include that tree right there in the shot, I would pan to it and then go one frame further to the left. Take the shot. And I'm going to look in the eyepiece and overlap about 35 to 50 percent. Take another shot and go all the way through the scene until I get the last frame that I want. And then after I get the last frame that I want, go one more and take that photograph. We now have the entire panorama that we want, plus one more frame on each end. Often you wind up liking those last frames, so you just put them in there anyway. Okay, so when taking panoramas, if you're using a longer focal length and your subject's at distance, then you can overlap about 30% and you'll be fine. If, however, you're using a wide angle and you've got close foreground material, you're, you need to overlap much greater than 30%, sometimes out to 50%. It's better to overlap too much in those cases than not enough. So 
So after capturing your photograph out here in the field, you go back into the digital darkroom, and if you're using Photoshop to put the panorama together, consider using the cylindrical mode. It seems to do the best for stitching panoramas together, lining things up. 